welcome back to this special edition of Mikasuki Sports Wrap. I've completed the classroom and pool portion of my scuba certification course, but before we jump in the beautiful waters of Key Largo, let's check out some more scuba gear essentials. All right, Dennis, so when it comes to the scuba equipment, where do we begin? Well, I always like to start at the regulator, which is the regulator here is basically your breathing device. Here That's you a good place to start yeah, then, right? Uh, I think this is important. This is your first stage. This is what's going to attach to the tank. This is what's going to convert 3,000 psi of air. The first stage regulates the pressure down to a pressure which's suitable to breathe at, which is an intermediate pressure at 140 psi. And okay, and along with that, you need to pair it with an octopus. This is your backup second stage, in case you have failure in your primary second stage or your dive partner has failure in their, either their second stage or they run out of air, they can breathe off your system. So this is like your emergency Yes, regulator. it's very important to use this. Any, any dive boat you go on, any dive trip you want, they require you to have the octopus. This is where it looks like it gets complicated. Okay, so basically what you're doing, of course, there's a hose attached to this, which goes into the high pressure port of your first stage regulator. This is the only port in your first stage that delivers high pressure, which is connected to the submersible pressure gauge, which is gonna indicate your tank pressure, 3,000 PSI. Above here, you have your submersible depth gauge, which is gonna indicate what depth you are during the dive. And as you get into a little more advanced, you have ones that have the submersible pressure gauge and also that have a dive computer that are going to give you your depth reading and also your bottom time and how long you can stay at that depth before you have to do decompression, before decompression stop and so forth. Now that you picked your regulator and instruments out, next thing is to pick out a BC, which is also known as a buoyancy compensator. Okay. The, the job of the BC is first of all is it's going to hold your tank using the strap system and the back plate system here and second of all it's going to provide buoyancy in the water because when you're diving you're going to be diving with weight and you're going to be weighted down so you need something to help you keep off the ocean bottom to control your buoyancy and this is what the bc does there's a few different style of bcs that you can choose from this is the most common st style bc is a bc i would call it it's a it's a bc that that inflates in the back and on the sides. This is gonna provide better buoyancy for you in the water. It's a, it's a more stable jacket, and on the surface, it's gonna float you a lot, a lot better than a jacket such as this one here, which is a back inflation jacket. I personally prefer the back inflation jackets because I like this having a jacket that's real streamlined up front. There's no big bulky pockets. There's no air cell in the front. Everything inflates in the back. Uh, there's, you know, there's upsides and downsides to both jackets. Really personal preference, and you, to me, the most important thing is fit. Are there different types of BCs for men and women? Uh, yes, there is. Nowadays, they have w BCs that are designed for women, and it, basically, they're BCs that are designed to fit women because of the, just the different shapes of their body and so forth, and especially the, the sizing is important. We have certain jackets, uh, like this one here, which is probably one of the most w popular women's jackets, which is just designed to fit a woman on the front a lot better than a man's jacket. A man's jacket, the straps tend to come over the chest a little more it's, and women find that to be uncomfortable. The women's jackets are designed so that it, it just fits the woman's body better. Dennis, can I try one of these beasties on for sure, size? Sure, We'll get you a lady's jacket. That's good. Even though I don't always act like a lady. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, first thing you want to do is you want to you close the comfort bun here. I'm going to snap this closed here and then tighten down in the shoulders. So you're ready to go. And I see here we have a lot of wetsuits. When do you want to use a wetsuit, wear a wetsuit? What's the difference in the types? Well, with wetsuits, there's all different kinds. There's the, anywhere from short suits, full suits, uh, and then you go to different thicknesses. The thickness of a wetsuit just varies on where you're going to dive and what water temperature. Is there ever a time when you don't need to wear a wetsuit? In the summertime here, it's, you know, it's so warm in the water. I mean, it's in the high 80s, so for some people, they don't use anything but bathing suits or shorts. I'm gonna need a wetsuit that's hot. I mean, I can't have these fish looking better than well, me we'll down here, we're gonna right? gonna find you some designer colors in there. <laughs> you might have a Gucci one in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dennis, well, thank you so much for showing me all the dive equipment that there is here at Austin's Diving Center. It's been a lot of fun. Well, thank you for coming by, and I hope you enjoyed your class, and we'll see you soon. All right, sounds all right, good. Thank you.
put all my scuba diving training to the test. We are ready for our first open water dive, so we've come to Key Largo to see DJ and the Rainbow Reef Dive Center. DJ, what types of things do you offer divers here at Rainbow Reef? Well, we offer everything from one day discover scuba classes all the way through up instructor training, and it's all done through Patty. And what exactly are we going to be doing today? Where are we going? What are we going to see? What are we getting into? We're going out to Molasses Reef. It's in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. Uh, we're going to be diving in a depth of about 25 feet of water, and uh, we're doing checkout dives today. And what are the types of animals we're going to be seeing? Well, we see everything from a couple of common sharks to eels to spotted eagle rays to lots of the schooling fish like grunts, uh, Bermuda chubs, sergeant majors. Uh, we even have dory at our reefs, but no Nemo. Key Largo is a really popular dive spot. Why? Uh, it seems to have, uh, I know this sounds self-serving, but it really is some of the nicest reefs that we have anywhere in the continental United States. Uh, I know Key West's ears will burn, but ours are a little bit nicer. It's nicer than Fort Lauderdale. It's pretty much the nicest place you can dive in the United States. Thank you, DJ. You're welcome. The sightseeing begins before we shove off as some of the locals stop by the dock to pay us a visit. There you go. name is a Tropical Voyager. She's a Coast Guard certified vessel. We're going out to the wreck of the Benwood. If anybody's not planning on going there, then you need to uh, basically get off of the boat now. Allison? Hello. Allison, you got to sit here. Here. We're going to be in the National Marine Sanctuary today, so nothing can go overboard. We need to keep the reefs clean uh, and uh, essentially in good shape. So don't touch, taste, tickle, tackle. Just swim by, look at the stuff, and leave it there for everyone else to see. When you get to the platform, be ready. Regulators in your mouth, uh, mask on your face, jackets inflated. Make sure it's clear, giant stride. OK signal when you pop up. Let's have everybody give the OK signal. Stay up there. Nice job, Michael. Okay, guys. Plenty more to come on the show up next. You guessed it, more scuba diving. Our next stop is French Reef off Key Largo. Don't go away. Mm -hmm. 